Hey gang, just wanted to do a quick unboxing of the new Battletech Beginner's Box set. As you can see, looking at this guy, and I'm not going on a script here, so enjoy the ride folks, off-roading the whole video. Very shiny, glossy box. I've already removed the cellophane on the back, but I have not opened it up yet. So on the back you've got deployment in three, two, one. And then the blurb. Um, basically giving you the spiel. If you've never seen Battletech before or played it. Um, this beginner's box set does come with two high quality, fully assembled, unpainted miniatures. Uh, you do get the 18 by 22 full, full color game map, double sided. You get die cut mechs uh, from paper and train tokens and some other stuff. The quick start rules, universe booklet. Uh, you get a novella by William Keith, uh, record sheets, mech warrior cards, and six sided dice, all for the low, low price of $19.99 retail standard. Uh, US. I don't know what it is in other countries, as I don't live there. But uh, hopefully, you guys pay the exact same equivalent, and it's fair pricing no matter where you live. All right, so bust the sucker open. Boom, we're greeted with the novella, The Golden Rule by William Keith. And yeah. Oh, it's got pretty pictures at the end. Yeah. So neat, I'm gonna give that a read. Not right now. We have the mech record sheets. I like these. Holy cow, do I like these. Neat. You know what? I know this is missing the, um, this bottom half, right? Where it talks about, like, the critical hits and all that jazz and the heat tracking. But I really like these half sheets. I wonder if you could just get away with transitioning Battletech away from the bottom half of the sheet and just use this. I'm sure that's heresy, and I'm sure a lot of you are like, down with him, boo, boo this man, whatever. The trick is to make the game more accessible to people coming in off the street. That's the trick. If you don't have new people coming in, what's the point? You can keep your your treehouse all you want, but not gonna help you. All right, and pilot cards with special pilot abilities. Neat. So let's see here. Gee, I won't, ugh. If I could talk today, it'd be great. So, the red target marketing is gunnery skill, and that's piloting. Makes sense. So, this is a 3 3 pilot. Gia Ya Wen. Looks like she pilots a Thunderbolt, and she's a part of the Red Lancers, the Capellan Hussars. House Liao. Boo. Uh, her special pilot ability costs five. It's Sam Blaster, and that's for LRMs. And she's a long-range specialist with large laser. Ooh. And then there's a Mika Kalu. These are double-sided. And that's a second Seti Hussars character from the House Davian. Also in a Thunderbolt. And she rocks... At least I assume it. Amika sounds feminine. I'm going to assume it's female. Uh, multitasker and tactical genius. And we got Eric Stendhal from Hanson's Rough Riders. He's in a Wolverine. He's got Sniper and Santa side. He's a 3-4. And then Maxim Kuznetsov. Maybe I got that right. He's a 4-5, and he's also in a Wolverine. First Sword of Light. And he's got Jumping Jack. Let's see here. There's uh, Polson. He's in House Corita. He's the Red Duke's personal guard and a Griffin. Sam Blaster, Weapon Specialist, and he is apparently the gentleman that's on this box set. Which also makes sense, because he's a 2-3. He's a... He gets a minus 2 to hit modifier when he attacks with his PPC. Drake Hawkins, 4-5, and he's a, another Griffin pilot for the third Lyran Guards. Range Master Long. Attacks at long range, receive a plus zero modifier. That's pretty nifty. But when he attacks at short range, he gets a plus four. Actually, I kind of like that. That's pretty nifty. Uh, Sen Shen. 
Uh, hopefully I did that right. 3-2 pilot. And he's in a locust, St. Ive. It pays to make sure how much time is actually on your memory card. I uh, was using a smaller capacity card and it just died on me. And then the last pi uh, pilot is Devin Coney. And House Davian, 4th Deneb, Light Cav, Locust, Maneuvering Ace. Got dice. And we have our two mechs. And... Come here, you. That is the Griffin. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I never thought these were coming out. I, I just really did not believe that these would actually physically be in my hands. And, uh, it's not bad. It is kind of like that soft PVC plastic that you see like on some of the miniatures from Mantic. But that's the Wolverine. Wolverine! Alright, so plastic insert. That came free. They didn't even advertise that on the box. So you get some hexes for terrain, cardboard standouts for more mechs, meat. I probably will never use them except for maybe demo games. Uh, paper mat. Now, I mean, I think this is a new mat on both sides. Maybe not. That actually looks familiar. I don't think that's new. Maybe it's the new map packs that are coming out that I have new. But the color's really good on them. Uh, I would suggest getting these laminated or something, flatten them out. Because I don't think they're going to hold up over time. I am not a fan of paper mats. I mean, these look really, really good, though. I just... I have something against paper mats. I don't think they're going to last. The Instant Guide to the Inner Sphere. Yay. Yay. Featuring artwork from all over the history of the property. You get the Inner Sphere circa 3025 because we can never leave 3025. Go ahead and flame me in the comments below. But that's my personal opinion. It's uh, low hanging fruit. It's easy to keep going back to it because everybody has good memories of it. And often that's what we associate Battletech with is 3025. And I get it. Quick start rules. Full color. Neat. Very neat. Basic rules for Battletech. For Classic. Not seeing anything for Alpha Strike, but... You know what? That's fine. Oh, look at that! Gator. Gunnery skill. Then you add the attacker's movement modifier. Target the move mar movement mar modifier. Other modifiers. Range modifiers, that's neat. Oh, and sweet, we got an advert for Iron Wind Metals. Neat. Well, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to put these guys on a turntable, take some quick video shots of these and put them up there for you. And then I'm gonna put paint, I think on both of them. And we'll come back. So we're going to prime this guy. So I'm going to use Steinal Res. That's the acrylic primer from Badger. I'm going to put a couple drops into my airbrush here and just do some coating. I already primed the Wolverine off camera. You guys did need to watch me prime too, you know, two mechs. But I'm just going ahead and getting right in there, hitting from all angles. You could prime it white. I am priming these black because I, one, it's the color of primer I have, but two, I'm not a big fan of white primer. I like my paints to come off with a certain level of grit, and depending on how you prime your miniatures, whatever the prime coat is, that will have an impact on 
the colors that you put on after it, after you layer it on. And I'm going to be mimicking the paint schemes that are actually on these character cards. And so both these mechs are going to be painted in House Karita colors. We're going to apply a layer, a fine layer of factory white from Reaper on top of our black. We're going to do it at a 45 degree angle. And we're going to be, that's called Zenithal highlighting. Um, it's a very popular technique. I don't really use it that often, but I'm going to try to make more use of it here in 2019 because I want to get good with the airbrush. But I guess the theory is, is that when you hit the mech at a 45, or your model rather, at a 45 degree angle with that white, you are pre-shading and pre-highlighting the paint that comes over. So remember when I said that the black primer gives you kind of a darker, grittier tone to your colors that are going to be applied after it? That's why this works. And I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of airbrush thinner. And you probably want to apply it just a little bit with a, I mean, just a lighter touch than what I'm doing, but it gives you kind of like the, the hint. The, the paint's going to go on the lighter areas or the, the more raised areas. And so when you apply those next layers of color, those should pop a little bit more. I did a lot better with the Griffin than I did with the Wolverine. But again, you know, practice makes perfect. And this is new to me. So next up, we're going to be using Vallejo Air, Model Air's Hull Red. I don't want to apply the red directly onto the miniature. It's going to get lost. So I kind of want a pre-color under it. That's a darker, darker brown slash red. So I put a little bit in there. And even though it's airbrush ready, I put a little bit thinner in there. And I'm just going to, you know, base coat the miniature with this whole red. So that red will pop even more when I put it, when I, well, when I apply it. So doing a little test spray. Yep, there it is. And again, I'm going at that 45 degree angle with it. I'm going to be using Secret Weapon Miniatures new mech acrylics for these. I'm going to use the Neo Burnt Red for the Karita Red and the Black Gray for the pants on the, uh, the Griffin along with the gun barrels as well because I don't want to paint metallics. Um, I think they're overdone. But overall, I just got these paints and I really like how they handle. And as you can tell, I'm trying to talk using my hands, but I'm not using that audio because it was junk. So anyway, here we go. So I'm applying that first layer of Neo Burnt Red and I'm realizing that it's going on pretty thin. So I may have over thinned it or or something, or it's just how it, that goes on. You know, some paints go on thin, others don't. So what I'm doing is I'm basically making really quick strokes um, and just trying to layer it on there without caking it on. And it's kind of like a fine line with a with an airbrush. You know, if you, you start seeing it run, then you're putting way too much on there. You just want to do quick bur bursts. So here comes the fun part. I'm going to use Silly Putty, yes, Silly Putty, to mask where I want to spray the, the, the different colors. You can also use the same technique for camo or anything else you want to do. So basically, I'm going to use the Silly Putty, surround the upper body of the Griffin, and uh, so I can go ahead and spray the legs with that secondary color. And I wish I would have captured it better on camera. just had a really a weird angle but of course you could use masking tape um, or a sheet of paper if you trust that uh, I, I wouldn't <laughs> the nice thing about the silly putty is that um, it while it shields the rest of your miniature that you don't want to have the new paint come on it doesn't ruin the silly putty at all and it doesn't pull up your previous layers of paint either it's great. So right now I'm using a shaper tool that would be used for sculpting. And basically I'm just pushing that silly putty in to get it tight. Uh, I don't want any weird wavy lines or awkward, you know, gradients when I'm uh, spraying that gray. So I just want to block it all off and that's helping me do that. Now it's time for the black gray. Shaking that up. 
putting it in the cup of the airbrush and put a couple drops of the thinner in there as well and we'll hit those legs. Um, the one thing I will say about this is I put a little bit less thinner in with um, the, bla the, the black gray here and I think it's just the paint is a little bit thin so it's meant to have multiple coats. Um, but for those that are just starting with airbrush or they're thinking about it, you want to make sure that when you mix your paint in your cup that it has the consistency of like milk and you'll hear like a bunch of people on YouTube and like uh, blog spot stuff and tutorials say the same thing. It's really just you a matter of you practicing and getting it right. There's no secret recipe or anything like that. The next step is to wash the, the mech or the model. I keep saying that. I mean, it's true that I'm washing the mech. At any rate, so I'm using Nuln Oil from Games Workshop, their Citadel paint line. It's a wonderful wash. You could use Secret Weapons Soft Body Black or Army Painters Dark Tone. That would work too. Uh, I just feel like the uh, the GW stuff in this case is um, gets a better effect. So for the red paneling, I'm using a recipe of two drops of Nuln Oil to one drop of Lamia Medium or water, your choice. If you don't have Lamia Medium or a matte medium, no worries. You can use water. You may want to use two or use a test piece just to practice and see how well it looks once it dries. Because uh, water does work a little differently than the Lamia Medium. And then for the legs, it's just straight Nuln Oil. I am washing that gray with black. But at the same time though, I am making darn sure that it doesn't pool on the flat panels. I want it to shade and help bring out the pre-shading that I did, which it will. But if I let it pool on the straight panels, it's gonna look like ass. I mean, let, let's be honest. Uh, you can, if you like that look, go for it. Um, but for me, I am I have moved on to that point that I will actually clean up my wash work and not let it pool. I, I, I did that for a whole Blood Angels army way back in the day when I first discovered washes. Uh, I wish I hadn't because their shoulder pads look crappy because they had the big blotches on them. Um, some of the models that I've put up here recently, they still have that blotching, but usually that's because of choice um, where I want to make it look like a burn mark or a dent or something like that where I'm trying to go for a 3D pseudo 3D look. But yeah, just straight null oil on the legs. So here we go. What it looks like so far. Not looking too shabby. Got, got a little bit of cleanup work to do. And I'll do that off camera. So what you didn't see was me painting the cockpits. And the process for that was pretty simple. Um, I used Principality Green as the base color in the cockpit window. I then took Corellia Green Shade from Games Workshop washed over that green i then took principality jade from secret weapon and drew little dash marks at a diagonal on the cockpits and then went back with a two to uh two to one uh known oil wash just for in the corners to help that pop to make it look a little bit more like there's a separation or a gap but here we go, we're gonna start applying some decals. I have pre-cut my decals out and they are sitting right there in my paint tray uh, or wet palette tray, gosh darn it. I'm doing this off the cuff, I don't have a script on this or anything. But what I'm doing is I have the areas where I want the decal to go, I have already hit with a gloss varnish. That's actually gonna help the, miniature, or the, the decal stick to where you want it. And so I'm just gently placing it after the, the decals come loose from the back in the water to where I want it. And then I'm gonna use Microsol, which you see there at the top of the screen. There's two different versions. I'm using this one, the red bottle. It gives the decals like a painted on look, which is what I really prefer. And I'm just dabbing it on there to keep it, to adhere to the miniature and the, the varnish. When you go back over your miniature and you hit it with like a matte varnish or even another gloss varnish or a satin varnish, whatever varnish you want to use, that'll also help protect it and seal it. 
So I'm putting the Draconis Combine logo on the left shoulder. And in the art, he has that Wolverine has a 52 on his chest. So what I had to do is I had to cut up a couple different uh, decals there uh, to get it uh, to be 52. Yeah, camera really wasn't behaving uh, when it came to the autofocusing. This is why I need a video crew, but I cannot afford one. And so we're going to pop that combine logo, logo right there on the shoulder of the griffin there. Boom. I've gotten a lot better with the decals over time. Really, those come down to practice. Um, just practice, 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 practice with water slide decals. They are a pain in the ass. So the next step, we're going to weather these bitches. So there's grab some foam. Tear off a piece and find the color you want to chip your model with. Uh, right now, I'm de debating on whether I'm going to use Celestial Gray or Dawnstone, but I'm going to go with Celestial Gray. And then I'm going to follow it up with another dabbing of Rhinox Hide, both from Games Workshop, over the Celestial Gray to make it look like there's more of a chip um, feel to it. So here we go, I've dipped the sponge in and I'm chip chip chipping away. And again, I wish I had a camera operator because I would be able to get some better shots. But remember just to dab away the excess paint away from your sponge. It's kind of like a dry brush technique. You know, when you do dry brushing, you load your brush, then you wipe it on a paper towel or a piece of cardboard to get rid of majority of the paint. And then you just bristle it on. Um, because you're dragging the brush across the miniature. Kind of like this. Um, same technique almost. You load the sponge up with paint. Dab it until there's very little left. Hold the miniature very still. And just pokety 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 poke. Dab 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 dab. And then you start seeing the chips appear. If you have too much paint on there. Uh, you may have to do some correctional work. Because it will make a mess. And if you accidentally twist the model. Or twist your hand where you're doing the dab motion you'll make a mess too. So, you know, just practice, 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 but you can get some really nice um, results just with that. And see, you can see I went a little too heavy. But never fear, Rhinox Hide is here to save my bacon. So I'm gonna use that to help kind of mask and cover up my boo-boos that I made. And Rhinox Hide is really my go-to when it comes to this type of weathering. Uh, I've used it on all of my, uh, like, Auslance, the, basically every mech you've ever seen. If it's got chipping, it's got Rhinox Hide on it. And it's such a great color. Uh, I just, I can't imagine using anything else. This is actually the first time I used a different color to chip, which was that Celestial Gray. And it had me really worried because it was so bright. But once I put the Rhinox Hide on top of it, I think it made the chipping look a little bit more realistic. And hopefully you do too. And finally, I'm using a matte varnish on the mechs. I'm just spraying it on there. Thin coats multiple times. I want to make sure that they get a nice even coverage. But I don't want the, the varnish to run. So I'm taking breaks. Now to also help finish it off... And you can see me actually cleaning up a, a couple boo-boos here where it's pooled a little bit. But after that gets done drying, I'll go back over the cockpit with a gloss varnish. You could use either hard coat from Citadel or you could use uh, the gloss varnish from Vallejo. I think they sell that everywhere, including like Hobby Lobby. So that's available. And I think actually, um, what is it? Liquitex makes one as well that you can get at Michael's in bulk. So that might be something to look into as well. Well, I'm going to go ahead and concede a couple things right off the bat. I don't have that sort of light decal there, and I don't have any other uh, numerical decals. I also did deviate from the yellowish orange, amberish, amberish color of the cockpit and opted for green because I believe that contrasts a lot better 
and it actually meshes up with my other Draconis Combine mechs better. But overall, we look at these two. Again, no amber, but we're looking at them. So how well did I do? Boom. You go ahead and pull this guy up. Fairly close. The legs aren't as dark, and I did not do the black stripe down the middle of the chest. I could have opted not to. The bases aren't finished because I'm going to save these guys for a spotlight, so I'm going to finish these bases later. But, really to paint these two up to look similar to what they look like here in the art, that's provided was about two nights worth of work and about two hours a piece. So about four hours to get these two done. Now I am a slow painter, I'm very, very slow, but most of that time was spent waiting for things to dry. So if you're painting big batches of things, you're gonna go really fast. Or if you got something else to paint, you'll, have, you'll be able to knock that out too, rather quickly. But I'm overall really, really pleased with them, and I'll finish these bases up, and you'll see these two on a spotlight, where I will actually talk about the pilots and how they're in that new box set, which you already know they're in the new box set because you're watching this video right now. But you'll be smarter than the other people that have not watched this video and just watched the spotlight. But I'm not implying that they're dumb. You guys know what I'm talking about. Is the box set worth it? I think for $20, it's not bad. You're getting two miniatures. The rules, uh, you're getting a game table, essentially, in terrain when you really boil down to it. Because this is a board game, right? At its core, it is a board game. Um, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad value. My only complaint, though, is um, I did try to remove mold lines. I did on the... I tried on the Griffin here. And I ended up scraping away detail. I used both a hobby, sharp hobby knife with a fresh blade and a mold line remover tool. Um, and it just really started hacking the miniature up. So I stopped. So that's why you're going to see these mold lines on the miniature. Right there. If it would focus. 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 There it is. So right there. You'll see it on the torso going down and on the legs. I just really didn't want to chop the miniature up too much with trying to clean it. I'm sure um, the guys at Camo Specs have them pristine. Um, and I'm sure other people will be really anal about that too. And um, trim all that stuff off and be really, really careful about doing so. I just don't want to, to ruin the miniatures. Not these first two. Any more that I do, yeah, if the mold lines are really, really bad, I'll go for it. But these are game playing pieces. I'm not trying to win display uh, awards or anything like that at the Crystal Brush or something silly like that. As far as gameplay pieces go, they're fine. The mold lines and the type of plastic they use may turn off some people. Um, but you really can't complain too, too much because they're already pre-built, they're pre-posed. Um, and they're in semi-dynamic poses and they look cool. They really do look cool. Is the beginner box set worth it? To sum it all up. I think so. Um, if you can get it cheaper than 20 bucks, go for it. Uh, but at $20 you're really not losing anything either. Especially if you're getting dipping your toes into Battletech for the first time. This is an excellent way to do it. 